As I previously entailed about the RPC Authority, they operate within the international stage and maintain diplomatic ties with national governments. Now, as you may have wondered, how does the Authority administer or apply administrative areas within the world that's so vast, large, and at times hostile? A few months ago, while I was working on this specific lore, I came to the realization of two things. Firstly, how is the Directorate able to organize and maintain proper leadership? And secondly, would it even be possible for the Directorate to even manage such a global scale management? I came to the realization for both points that feasibility would not be met and or possible. So the task of managing operations at the continental level was entrusted to only a certain number of individuals. These individuals are referred to as regional directors. As it is implied by their name, regional directors are perhaps the most seniority persons within the organization's hierarchy, excluding the global directors. Unlike site directors that handle day-to-day -day operations at a site facility, regional directors oversee and handle operations at regions known as operational districts. These districts are, of course, administrative centers that regionalize management and logistics for authority facilities. They were conceptualized back in the early mid-1940s following the reorganization of internal structure. This factor alone resulted in the formation of regional commands, the regional directors, and reforms within the board. And as always with any topical segment, I cannot disclose information pertaining to the directorate, but also said information will also be discussed in another video. So why were regional commands formed? And more importantly, why even delegated to regional directors? Well, for simple reasons. The authority by the 1950s was entering a new internationalism era, where diplomatic negotiations became a priority, and more importantly, directly organizing leadership at the regional level became difficult to maintain. This is where the regional directors come in. They would handle operations and oversight at the regional level, so difficulty for the directorate would not be imposed or cause difficulties while maintaining organization leadership as a whole. Hence why the hierarchy included the regional management as the middle, senior individuals between site management and global management. Now, with the regional directors entrusted by the global directors to maintain operations at the regional level, what kind of authority do they even have? Well, a lot actually. Firstly, not only do they head an assigned region, but they have the absolute authority to appoint and remove area and OL site directors at their discretion without the consent of the directorate. Remember, any issue that concerns the regional level is primarily in the hands of the regional management. And, speaking of authority related to regional management, they also have the ability to provide funding and logistics to all authority installations within their region. This means they can shut down or construct site facilities at their discretion. Now, of course, as with any organization like the authority, bureaucracy, whether you consider it as unfortunate or unfortunate, exists. The Presidium asserts power over regional level operations, and regional directors have to be discreet about their funding as potential waste deemed by the Office of Financial Affairs can affect their, their yearly fiscal budget. I've yet to actually elaborate further what these regional commands, let alone what operational districts, look like. Currently, as of 2021, there are 9 total regional commands each with varying numbers of operational districts. These include North, South, West, East, Africa, Eurasia, Asia, Oceania, and Antarctica commands. <sighs> now, like I said, operational districts vary from one to another. Western Command has four, Northern Command has seven, Southern Command has five, Eastern Command has four, Africa Command has five, Eurasia Command has four, Asia Command has three, Oceania has three, and Antarctica has one for obvious reasons. You may have noticed that Northern Command is the only command component to consist of more than five operational districts and regional directors. Why is debatable, but you have to take into consideration that operational districts are formed based on historical and geographical precedent. One key example is the Cold War between West and East Commands. According to the archive files, East Command was formed following the events of the Berlin Wall and forced transfer of dangerous RPCs out of Soviet territory due to concerns of infiltration and acquisition, let alone potential force removal from the Soviet Union. But hey, this is the first time the Authority faced potential force removal from a sovereign nation. So in total, if we're counting that one regional command with one operational district, I'm looking at you Antarctica, 
There are a total of 36 operational districts, meaning there are 36 regional directors overall. There's one other piece of information I've left out, but I think it's best that I make a separate video since this topic heavily involves the directorate. And that video will come out after this video has been posted. To conclude this video, regional directors play a vital importance within the internal structure, balance of power, and representing the best of the authority within their regions.